Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steve Donahue. Your talk today was not only were we entertained and enlightened, but we ended up with a wonderful message about lessons in life. The most important journeys in life can't be mapped out, so you have to follow a compass. A compass can guide you or your company even when the terrain is shifting, even if you don't have a destination. And you probably follow a compass without realizing it. How many of you have children? Okay. How many of you, whenever any of your kids were born, mapped out a 20-year plan for that child and you review it quarterly with them? <laughs> I didn't think so. So then what guides you as a mom or dad? It's probably a feeling, an instinct, a sense of knowing what's right. I call that a compass. I never planned to cross the Sahara Desert. I was 20 years old, it was 1976. I am completely unprepared for this experience, especially when it comes to the clothing that I've brought with me. There's a road that goes part way across the Sahara Desert and that just ends, you aren't anywhere. And eventually everyone gets stuck, and when you get stuck, you hope some guy comes along to give you a push wearing really tight white shorts, just like mine. Kind of takes your breath away, doesn't it? Oh no, I'm not making this up. I, I couldn't make this up. In the Sahara, we say the more you stop, the farther you go. If you stop at every oasis in your life, you will go farther because you will have more energy and enthusiasm. You will have a clearer sense of direction and you will be connecting with the people on your journey that really matters and that will change lives. And Talis and I were about to do that again. You see, the nomads had come north from the border. The border had reopened. Traffic was beginning to move south, and they knew of a truck at the oasis in Tamanoreset that was getting loaded up, and it was going to head south across the rest of the Sahara. They also knew some nomad friends who had sold their camels and were going to ride on top of that truck. They told Talis and I there was room for us, so we hurried back to Tamanoreset, and we got on that truck. <laughs> and that's how we crossed the rest of the Sahara Desert. Thank you very much.